Hello, my name is Jayesh. Welcome to the session that discusses the new Customer 360 portal and new dashboard portal zones which are available from the 21A release of Oracle Utilities Customer Cloud Service. In this session, we will talk about these new features and how they can impact your business. We will give you an overview of the new Customer 360 portal and dashboard portal zones, followed by more detail to explain how you would use it and the benefits to your business. Then we will walk you through a demonstration. Finally, we will explain what you need to consider when implementing these features in your business and provide you with some additional resources. The new Customer 360 portal and dashboard portal zones provide an enhanced 360 degree view of the customer. These features enable easier call handling as they help call center agents address common account maintenance requests and inquiries from a single screen without requiring them to navigate around the solution. As a result, the training required for customer service roles is reduced. As I mentioned earlier, the new Customer 360 Portal and Dashboard Portal Zones provide an enhanced view of a customer. Several existing zones have been redesigned and consolidated into a smaller number of new zones specifically for use by call center agents. These visually appealing, easy to use, streamlined zones present the most critical information about a customer in a single screen. This minimizes the need for call center agents to unnecessarily navigate around the solution. There is reduced duplication of data across zones while still maintaining continued access to existing robust functionality. The Customer 360 portal contains three main zones. The Customer Activity History Zone, the Customer Insight Zone, and a Financial Detail Zone which consists of use for usage and billing, financial history, and payment agreement information. The Dashboard Portal consists of a new Customer Zone which displays all the key data points about a customer and a new premise tree zone which combines the existing premise and account trees in Control Central. Now let's take a look at these new features so you can see how the Customer 360 Portal and new Dashboard Portal Zones can be used by your business. Let's start off by looking at the three zones in the new Customer 360 Portal. At the top left we have the Customer Activity History Zone which provides a timeline style activity feed of various account related events in reverse chronological order for the customer. These may include billing events, payment events, customer contacts, cases, credit and collections related processes and events, field activities and so on. By clicking on one of these account related events you can be navigated to the appropriate page where the transaction is maintained and where you can also obtain further information. If required, you can use the filter by drop down to select or deselect account related event types to display. The Customer Insight Zone can display various messages highlighting a variety of insights for the customer in context. You can configure various insight types that are applicable to your implementation to be displayed in the zone. Here you can see some examples of visual patterns that can be configured. You can also configure actions that can be performed by users associated with a particular type of insight. The third zone, the Financial Detail Zone, currently comprises of three views, Usage and Billing, Financial History and Payment Agreements. The Usage and Billing view provides graphical representations of billed amounts or costs and usage over time. These bar charts allow you to easily identify costs and usage trends for the customer in context. The cost bar chart enables you to view the overall build amounts as well as the proportion of costs split across various service types. By clicking on a specific bar you can be transferred to the customer's bill represented by that bar. The usage bar chart enables you to view overall usage to help answer usage related queries. You can toggle from the cost bar chart to a usage bar chart for a specific type of usage using the cost usage drop down option. You can view the trended usage bill period by bill period. You can also view the trend in daily usage within the bill period if that level of detail is captured for the customer. 
In addition to the graphical representations, you can also view cost and usage information in a table format. You can toggle between the table and bar charts by simply clicking on the applicable option located at the top right of the usage and billing view. You can view costs associated with all service types or specific service types by selecting the appropriate option in the service type drop down. The second view in the financial details zone is the financial history view. This displays financial summary information for an account and also lists its financial events. At the top of this view, the financial summary information includes current and payoff balances, deposit information, a link to the last bill, next bill date, and credit related information. An account's financial events are displayed just below the financial summary information in reverse chronological order based on arrears date and may include billing charges, payments, and adjustments. From here, you can expand specific financial events to view additional details. For billing charges, you can see high level bill, bill segment and bill segment calculation line related information. You can also drill to the applicable bill or bill segment transaction. For payments, you can see high level pay segment information and drill to the financial transactions on payment page. For adjustments, you can drill to the adjustment transaction. The third view in the financial details zone is the payment agreements view. Now this view is only enabled if the customer context has one or more active payment agreements. A payment agreement is considered to be a payment arrangement or a pay plan. This view displays the active payment agreements for the customer's account, a list of scheduled payments for each agreement and an indication of which scheduled payments have been made. From this view you can also drill to the relevant payment arrangement or pay plan. Ok, that covers the new Customer360 portal. Let's now have a look at the new Dashboard Portal Zones. In this release, a new Customer Zone and Premise Tree Zone have been provided. On the top right of the screen you can see the Customer Zone. This displays simplified but crucial information about the customer. As you can see, the customer's name and various contact details are displayed. Also, the customer's account's current balance is displayed along with the customer class the account belongs to. If applicable, other persons linked to the customer's account are also displayed. Just below the new customer zone, you can see the premise tree zone. This provides a combined premise and account tree view for the customer. It displays various entities linked to the premise and context as well as other premises that may be associated to the account and context. This includes service agreements, service points, devices and measuring components. You can see the type of meter installed, the connection status of the meter and so on. You can navigate to these entities through the provided links and also to other pages from the associated context menus. Finally, you can also initiate process flows for start service requests, stop service requests and or transfer service requests from the zone. Now, both of these new dashboard portal zones may be used as an alternative to your existing configured current context portal zone. Now summarizing what you have seen in this demonstration, the new Customer360 portal and new dashboard portal zones as a combination provide an enhanced 360 degree view of a customer. In this implementation advice section, we will go through what you need to consider to make the most of the Customer360 portal and new dashboard portal zones in your business. There are four main tasks that you should complete to make the most of the new Customer360 portal and dashboard portal zones. First, you must add the two new dashboard zones to the dashboard portal. After you have added these zones to the dashboard portal, Users' individual portal preferences should be configured to display these zones in the appropriate location in the dashboard portal. Additionally, the configured current context zone in the dashboard portal should be set to not be displayed. The reason for this is that the new customer and premise tree dashboard zones are meant to replace the configured current context dashboard zone. Next, you define the possible insights or information to be highlighted on the Customer360 portal. There are several insight types already provided. To highlight additional insights, you can configure new insight types to meet your business needs. You must also configure an insight group for the customer insights 
insight class if one does not already exist. You then update the insight group for the customer insights insight class with the insight types to be highlighted. The customer insight zone uses this insight group to determine which insight types to highlight. Next, you must define the billing and usage configuration settings for the usage and billing tab in the financial details area of the Customer 360 portal. This is done on the Billing and Usage Display Configuration Master Configuration Record. Here you can configure a default time period and the units of measure and specific service quantities to display per rate. You can also define colour options and summarisation of data within applicable bar charts. Finally, you can override the default display icons in the new zones in the Customer360 portal and dashboard. You can do this on the Display Icon Override Configuration Master Configuration Record. Here you can configure the various icons to be used to override the default icons related to the activity, customer contact, field activity and service agreement maintenance objects. Now, this demo will show you what you need to configure for the Customer360 portal and new dashboard portal zones. As I mentioned earlier, the first task is to add the new customer and premise tree zones to the dashboard portal. This can be performed on the portal admin page for the dashboard portal. As you can see from this example, the customer and premise tree dashboard zones have been added and configured to be displayed by default. Next, you need to update users' portal preferences to position these zones in the appropriate sequence in their dashboard portal. This is performed on the Portal Preferences tab on the User Admin page for your users. In addition to this, you should also update the currently configured Current Context Zone to no longer be displayed. The reason for this is that the new Dashboard Portal Zones are intended to supersede the Current Context Zone. The second task is to define messages or insights to be highlighted in the Customer Insight Zone on the Customer360 portal. If insight types do not exist for the various messages or insights you want to highlight, you can configure these on the Insight Type admin page. Here you define the main information for each insight type. This includes the visual structure and how to display insights of this type and the algorithm that determines the message to be displayed. You also specify the visual settings to be applied to the message or insight, for example colours. If applicable, you can also define the configuration for the actions that may be visible to a user for this insight type. Next, you create an insight group if one does not exist for the Customer Insights Insight class. It is this insight group that the Customer Insight Zone interrogates to determine which messages or insights need to be highlighted for a customer. Here you define the valid visual structures applicable to the insight group. You also define various insight types that can be displayed in the zone. The third task is to define the configuration settings for the usage and billing view in the financial detail zone. This is done on the billing and usage display configuration master configuration record. Here you define the number of months to display in the year view bar charts. You also define the usage values or type of usage to be displayed in the cost usage drop down for a user to select from. This involves associating the service type and unit of measure applicable to each type of usage and the sequence in which these appear in the drop down. For the usage year view bar chart, you configure the service quantities to be displayed per rate. You also define which color should be used for each service quantity per rate. For the cost year view bar chart, you can define a default colour for each service type as well as an override colour per SA type if required. You can also specify whether you want a separate bar stack for the ending balance for the bill to be displayed for balance forward accounts. Finally, for the cost and usage table view, you may define the service types to be available and the sequence in which each value appears in the service type drop down. You also configure the service quantities to be displayed in the table view per rate and the sequence in which they will appear with their associated cost and usage information. 
The final task is to define override icons for the default icons that appear in the various Customer360 portal and new dashboard portal zones. This is done on the Display Icon Override Configuration Master Configuration record. In particular, these apply to the defaults for the Activity, Customer Contact, Field Activity and Service Agreement maintenance objects. These configuration options enable different icons to be displayed for various activity types, various contact class contact type combinations for customer contacts, various field activity types and various service types for service agreements. For additional information about the new Customer360 portal and new dashboard portal zones, please see the Oracle Utilities Customer Cloud Service Library on Oracle Help Center, which is available at docs.oracle.com. This concludes this presentation. Thank you for watching.